Well, it's been one month since that first earthquake followed by the tsunami that completely rattled, shook up, and flooded Japan's northeast region. Survivors are living in shelters, waiting in fear as workers at the nuclear power plant nearby in Fukushima try to prevent a meltdown there. Now, meanwhile, contaminated water from that island's damaged nuclear power plant has been emitting radiation. Also, it's being flushed into the ocean. Power plant workers are trying to keep the plant stable while those radiation levels climb, and they do climb higher than the Japanese government considers safe for its workers. Thanks for joining us here on News 12. I'm Matt Sampson. It's been dominating our headlines here and around the world, and a lot of folks in the Hutz Valley are asking a big question. What if an earthquake, a big one, were to shake our nuclear power plant Indian Point. Joining me now is Dr. Michael Wall, Director of Nutrition at in Integrated Medicine in Mount Kisco. I want to welcome him. Thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure, Matt. And, you know, you're conceding the fact that, you know, too much radiation is bad for everybody, but yes. you're saying for some of the lower levels, you know, we can guard against it. And the first thing I think of is KI, potassium iodide pills. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think uh, it's true that we can uh, guard against some of the, the effects of different forms of radiation to a point, and there's that threshold level where there's just no return. Right. But for small amounts of radiation that we're exposed to on a daily level and extra amounts that we might be exposed to if there was some sort of issue, we can take certain dietary and nutritional supplements that can lessen the effects on biological systems, our bodies. And you mentioned one, which is the potassium iodide, and that's very important. And the, uh, the EPA knows that that's important. It's approved for radiation exposure, but that's just the thyroid gland. There's the rest of the body as well that we need to protect ourselves from. And what you're saying now, too, is we're not trying to create hysteria at this point. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, the way the climate goes, winds, high winds, we're already feeling some radiation from the fallout from the nuclear power plant in Japan. And we don't know how long that's going to last, how much worse it might get. Mm -hmm. So that you're saying even now we don't need something going wrong at Indian Point to start to take precautions. That's exactly right. And, uh, you know, even the best laid plans cannot uh, overcome possibilities that, you know, human error might make. And, and accidents have happened. And there have been over 100 different accidents uh, worldwide involving nuclear power plants. And about half of them have been in the United States. So it's possible. So I want to take some general, reasonable precautions. Now, are there things we can do, build into our daily diet, so that yes. we don't wait for it to happen and then do it? That's exactly right. You want to start thinking about this now. First of all, these things I'll talk about are for general health and well-being. So they're not only specifically for radiation exposure, but we know when you expose animals to radiation that have higher levels of certain nutrients in their bodies, the effects of the radiation are far less. So some of those things would be, for example, all manner of fruits and vegetables, particularly the multicolored vegetables, which have very high amounts of antioxidants. You want to think about different types of berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and other types of fruits, kiwis, uh, prunes, blackberries, bananas. They have antioxidants, which help protect and help heal tissues from what's known as oxidative or free radical stress, that's the kind of stress that radiation causes in the body. Oh, really? So, because uh, I, you know, we've had nutritionists on here before talking about those things just for, like you said, general health exactly. and combating aging. And now you're saying, yeah, keep that in your diet, and it can also help you when those little small doses of radiation might come. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we normally age through oxidative stress, so one could think of radiation exposure, even small amounts that are considered safe. But we have radiation exposure from a variety of sources. So even if a small amount is released that's a safe level from, let's say, a nuclear power plant, on top of other exposures, it may not be so safe. So again, keeping in mind those fruits and vegetables, and also all manner of beans, whether it's uh, kidney beans or pinto beans, for example, very, very high on what's known as an ORAC level, which is a governmental guideline for very high antioxidant intake. And then there are the antioxidant supplements which are concentrated forms of the antioxidants because you may not eat well or you may not eat as well as you need to for this extra bit of protection, particularly if you live within 10 or even 50 miles of a nuclear power plant. Well, that's Indian Point, and that's us, a lot of folks in the Hudson Valley. Thanks very much, Dr. Wall, Thank for you coming very much. in. So fruit, veggies, antioxidants, right. also getting them from beans and supplements. Right. And nuts as well, and take those supplements. Great. Thanks very much. And folks, stay with us. I hope you appreciated that information. And there's more coming up on Daytime.